Hey guys, it's Sam for Ryzen Lab, and in this video, I want to go over some of the quality of life updates that we made to Ryzen UV 2025. They weren't quite big enough to have their own video, so I thought I'd put them all together and uh, do this video here. So let's move on over to the application and go through them. Okay, the first thing we have is uh, we've reworked the preferences window. So this is uh, 2024, so this is the old preferences, and if I open up this you can see that it's not particularly aesthetically pleasing and if I open some of these up there's not really a clear delineation between the category and the contents of that category and uh, also when you open and shut some of these it actually reorganizes where you are located in this list and it can get a bit confusing about what's going on so we've actually made this a whole lot better in 2025. As you can see here, we have a clear separation between the categories on the left here and the actual information pertaining to that category. Uh, it's a lot more aesthetically pleasing as well. And it also means that we can populate each of these sections with more things related to that section and actually have more sections as well with it looking cleaner. Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is selection backface highlighting. Uh, we're in 2024 here, and this is how it used to be handled. So if I select a couple of things here, and then scooch underneath the model and take a look, we have absolutely no idea what has been highlighted here, because you can't tell from the backface. Now this is incredibly annoying from an artist's point of view, because if I wanted to make multiple selections here, I'd have to click something. I can't see what's selected, shift click something. And then to check what's been selected, scooch back around the front and say, oh yeah, these things have been selected. It's incredibly unhelpful. And um, I personally found it quite annoying. So here we are in 2025, and this is the new way that we're handling this. So if I make selections again, like I did before, and then look underneath, we can see exactly what's been selected because now the back face of selected islands are shown uh, yeah, on the back faces. This is incredibly helpful and uh, saves a lot of time. Okay, moving on. We've improved the hover behavior when it comes to unfolding. Now, this is actually something that drove me up the wall. And uh, so we're in 2024 and I've got these two simple boxes and all their sides are cut and nothing is flat which is why there's nothing here. So let me go through how this was working in 2024 and older versions of Ryzen UV. If I hover my cursor over this island here and press U to unfold, you can see that it's unfolded and now appears in the UV view. Okay, great, let's go back. So I've Control z there. If I go into an empty space of the window and press U, everything gets unfolded and it also gets packed as well because because there were no flat islands in the UV tile, a uh, pack function is performed too. Okay, so let's go back again. Now I'm going to hover over this island and press U, and then I'm going to go into an empty space and press U. And nothing happens. And the reason for that is because there's already a flat island present in the tile, it just won't unfold the rest. So if I want to unfold the rest, I have to select them. So I'm in island mode, I've got then control A, press U, so they get unfolded, and then I can perform my pack. This is just a little bit laborious and uh, it's a bit of a pain. So here we are in 2025, exact same scenario. And if I hover over this island and press U, it gets unpacked. And if I go now go into the empty space and press U, everything else gets unfolded as well. There's no need for me to switch modes and then select everything and then press U. I can just go in an empty space and press U. You know, this is the expected behavior and it's so much easier, especially when you're working on a complex model. You're going through making cuts, unfolding. And now, of course, all you have to do is press the P button to pack and we're there. Okay, so next we have border selection. So this is 2024 and the old way of dealing with border selection. So if I select my select tool and open up these attributes here, you can see that we've got select borders here and the shortcut for this is control B. I'm just gonna press this and you'll see that 
all the borders are, are selected. And that's it. That's all it does. Uh, if you want to select the borders of a single island, you're going to have to isolate it first and then control B, say the equivalent of the shortcut for this button. Um, and that feels a little bit clunky. So here we are in 2025 and things are a little bit different. If I press the select tool, we've still got this border uh, selection button. And if I click that, it will select everything. And again, the shortcut for it is control B. But in 2025, we don't have to isolate to select a single island. So if I unselect this and just choose a single edge on a border of an island and press control B, now it only selects the border for that island. And I can uh, select another border and add to the selection and control B. So there's a lot more control there now, and you don't have to isolate to select the borders of single islands. Okay, the next thing to talk about is selecting unlocked islands. So we're in 2024 here, and if I select a bunch of uh, islands and right click and say lock, you can see we've got a bunch of locked islands. But say I wanted to select everything that's unlocked. There's no way of doing this in 2024 and older versions of Ryzen UV. And if I come up to the select menu and have a look down, there's nothing here that's really going to help us. Um, so really what I'd have to do is select the islands that are unlocked manually like this and then pick them out. And there's a couple here that are inside locked islands. So you can see it'll be a bit of a painful process. So here we are in 2025, and if I do the same thing, I'll select a bunch of islands, I will right click and lock them. Now, if we go up to the select menu, there is an option here, select unlocked. And if I click that, all unlocked islands are selected. And if we wanted to select the locked islands, that's easy enough to do because now we can just invert our selection by pressing control I. Okay, next we have the ability to repack and cancel when editing group box shapes. So I'm just going to select these three islands here. This is 2024, so this is how the old way worked. And I'm going to isolate these islands, and I'm just going to group them together. So there's our group. And if I was to select this label here, or even move one of these corners, you can see everything's gone red. And this means that we're in edit mode for the group. Now the problem with this in old versions of Ryzen UV is there's no way of getting out of this. It doesn't matter if I hit the escape key or, or I can't back out of this. The only way to get out of this is to either perform a pack and you can see that that red has now disappeared. If I just go back one step, control Z, the other option is to select the contents of the group and then pack the contents. And now I'm out of this edit mode. So here we are in 2025, and I'm going to pretty much do the same thing. So I'm just going to select a few of these islands and isolate them, put them in a group by selecting, and I'm pressing the G key, the shortcut for group. And you can see they're in this group again. And if I move the group bounds, you can see that we're in edit mode again. But now we've got these different options. So I can cancel this and the group will snap back to its original position, so I can actually get out of it. If I change my mind and go, actually, I don't want to do that, I can. Or the other option is I can repack the contents of the group, but I don't have to go through and select the contents. I can just press repack, and it will repack the contents of the group. Okay, next we have margin settings for trim areas. So I've loaded in our trims from a file, and we can see we've got this non-uniform shape here, and here are our trim areas. And I've got all my trim settings here, so I'm just gonna press the Update Hotspot button. And all of our islands have been assigned into trim areas. I'm just gonna zoom in slightly so we can see better. So I'm gonna undo this, and in our settings, now we have this margin setting. I'm not gonna show you 2024 because this setting was simply not present. But if I say, hey, I want a margin of 50 pixels, just make it a little bit extreme so you can see it, and then uh, update hotspot, you can see we've got now a margin between the island and the edge of the trim area. You may be thinking, well, what's the use case for this? 
And actually, one of our users asked for this feature because they were trying to implement a technique that was used by the developers of Sunset Overdrive to create 45 degree angles, sort of smooth bevels in normal maps. If you want to know more about this, just search for Sunset Overdrive Ultimate Trim Technique and you will see what they were up to. Okay, moving on, let's talk about uh, back face rendering modes in the viewport. So I've got a model loaded here, it's a cave system, and if I, uh, you know, zoom out, and come out the other side of this, we can see that we're in fact looking at the back face. So let me just turn the wireframe back on uh, with polygons. Now this isn't particularly useful, this view, but we've added new render modes for the back face. So we've got front and back, which just renders the front and back normally. Uh, we've got the mode that you already saw, which is this one right at the bottom, which is front shaded and the back a solid color. This just helps you define what is a back face and what is a front face. But we also now have front only. So this will only render the front side of polygons. So basically back face culling. And if we go into the mode without a wireframe, we can now see inside this cave system because the back face is being culled out. We also have the option to render the back only. So if you look inside now, you can't see any front faces. You're just seeing uh, the back face render. So yeah, we've got these different uh, render modes now. Okay, moving on to an update with the orientation histogram. So down the bottom here where we've got the distortion bar, I'm going to change this to orientation. And as you guys probably already know, if I uh, drag select up here along the V-axis, it will um, select all the verticals here. And I can do the same in the middle here, which represents the U-axis. And I get all the horizontals. But we've updated this now, so now we've got this borders button. So now this bar will only display edges that are on the borders of islands. So now if I select along the V axis up here, drag select, it'll only be the verticals on the borders that will be selected, and the same with the U axis here. It'll only be horizontal edges that are on the borders of islands. Okay, moving on, we have now added the ability to select invalid topology. So let's load some. I'm going to go load, load this invalid topology. And you can see at the bottom we've got a warning in our 3D polygons here. And obviously it's this that is invalid. But now if we go to the select menu, we can go down and click select invalid topology. And you can see that this edge has been selected because it is a non-manifold edge. And if we were in island mode and went to select invalid topology, this topology here gets highlighted. Okay, let's talk exporting trim sheet layouts. I've got some arbitrary trims here and this is 2024. So if I was wanted to export these trims as a trim sheet layout, I'd go to export and it would open up this window and you can see here that we've got one option and that's to export it as an SVG. This has now been updated in 2025. So here we are in 2025, we've got the same arbitrary trims uh, in our UV tile and if we go to export you'll see that we've got SVG file as an option but we've also now got PNG, bitmap and TGA. So we've added a few more options there to save your trim sheet layout. Okay, next we have uh, the weld tool now ignores hidden islands. So as a general rule in Rhizome UV, if you isolate something like this and then perform an operation on it, or perform an operation globally, it will only affect this island here because everything else is effectively hidden. So let's unhide everything, uh, and this is 2024. So there was a bit of an issue with the weld tool in 2024 and older versions of Ryzen UV. In edge mode, if I select this edge here, 
and press the W key, that's the shortcut for weld, it will bring the island that you want to weld to this edge that you have selected and weld it. So now this is a single island. So this is the expected result. So let's go back, Control Z, and I'm going to isolate this island now. And we're going to do the same thing again. So with this edge selected, you can see the pairing line going off to something that isn't there. And if I press W now to weld, the entire island disappears. And it's because that island is no longer, it's been changed. So it kind of disappears. So here we are in 2025. And if I select an edge at the bottom here, you can see it going off up here. Press W. These are now welded. Let's do this again, but with this island isolated. So hovering over it, I'm going to press I. And again, with this edge selected, I'm going to press W to weld. And this time, nothing happens because Ryzen UV is now saying, hey, if your islands are hidden, then nothing is going to happen. So only islands that are visible will actually perform a function on it. So in this case, it won't bring this island to this edge and weld because it's not visible. Okay, next up we have the splitter sections being more visible. This is 2024, and if I put my mouse cursor over this middle section here, there's no indication that you can actually move it or grab it, but you can. So if I get right over this middle bit, press left click and then drag, I can actually move this. But there's no indication whether you're over the target or not. So here we are in 2025, and if I move my mouse across it, you can see that it actually gets highlighted now. So you know when you're over the target, and you can in fact drag it. And this is a good indicator that you can actually do that. Same here as well. So when I go over here, you get this little indicator, and you can drag this. Okay, next. Hotkeys can now be assigned to dropdowns. If we have a look at this drop down here, we've got different view modes, so polygon, wireframe, polywire. And we can assign a hotkey to this now, and repeated presses will actually cycle through each item in this menu. So if we go to Edit, Control Customizer, we'll go to the hotkeys here, and it says press a hotkey by combining a character and modifier. I'm just going to choose Alt 1, and then it'll ask me to click the button that I want this to be assigned to. So I'll click this here, and that has been successfully assigned to shading mode. And I'm gonna press OK now to close this. And now if I just press Alt-1, it will now cycle through the options in that drop-down menu. Something else that uh, seems pretty small, but it isn't, you know, it's an improvement, is the fact that now clicking a drop-down closes it if it's open. So this is 2024, and if I open up the unwrap menu at the top here and then press it again, nothing happens. You have to either select something in the menu or click off of it. And the same is true for the drop down buttons as well. Clicking it again doesn't do anything. You either have to make a selection or click off. So here we are in 2025, and if I do the same thing, click on the unwrap menu and then just click on the menu again, it actually gets closed. And the same with this button, I don't have to select anything or click off of it. I can just press the button again and it closes. So a small improvement, but an improvement nevertheless. If you enjoyed our video, please like and subscribe and hit the notification bell for video updates. You can check us out on social media, Discord and our website, links in the description. And if you're looking for more Ryzen UV content, you can choose one of these videos on screen. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.